Hi guys, this is going to be a video to show you how to <clears throat> uh, graph the polynomial function using a table of values. Uh, we usually don't uh, want to make a bunch of points, plot a bunch of points to draw any kind of a function, but uh, in this case, since it's hard for us to predict and since it's your first exposure to polynomial function graphing, <laughs> Um, we're going to do a table of values just so you can get a feel of, uh, you know, the level of difficulty and kind of how I would determine the shape of the function. We're also going to use end behavior to guide us. <clears throat> okay, so um, when you're graphing a function like this, unfortunately, uh, you know, for a line you need two points, and for a parabola you need at least three points to graph the function, but for a polynomial, you need many, many more points, actually, but we're going to restrict it to maybe five points. Uh, and unfortunately, so I'm, I'm going to cross this off, we won't end up using the sixth uh, point. But uh, that means a lot of work by hand to find a bunch of uh, uh, x and y values before we can plot the graph. Now, uh, let me let me say I'm probably not going to do all the work for letter B. I'll abbreviate that so that the video is not four hours long. Um, but uh, you know you have to be able to calculate y values from chosen x values and show all your work for these type of questions. Okay, and so first of all let's let's go in and jump in and look at this. So we say first of all we we can use these ideas up here from. Uh, talking about end behavior <clears throat> to guide our graph initially. So we can look at the function and go, the leading coefficient here is negative 1 and the degree is 3. So you can make a note for yourself, the degree is odd and the leading coefficient, I'm abbreviating, is negative. So that tells me something. That tells me that I should expect the function to look something like this. Uh, if we look up here again, uh, degree is odd, leading coefficient is negative, something like this, something like this. Uh, the details of what's happening in here, we don't know. But <clears throat> at least we know that the ends need to point in opposite directions, start in the top and the left, end in the bottom and the right. Okay, Or, like we said, uh, the function should go towards infinity here and negative infinity here. All right. And so <clears throat> let's pick some x values. And I think uh, I said let's just do five. So I'm going to start with negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And students always ask which value should I pick. Since we have to make more points than just three for a polynomial to kind of get a sense of the shape, just pick five. Always pick five for a polynomial. For a line, you just need two. For a parabola, you just need. For a quadratic function, which is also a polynomial but a specific one, you only need three. But for a general polynomial, at least five would be good. Okay. And so you do this, and you just plug stuff in. All right. So I'm going to take the function. Let me erase my scribbles here. We're going to take this function and just plug stuff in. So you go f of negative two. Plug this first x value in here. Uh, equals negative negative 2 cubed plus negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2 minus 3 and you simplify that and you get uh, this would be negative 8 times negative 8 which is 8 uh, this would be positive 4 so plus 4 this would be negative 6 minus 3 and you get 3 Okay, so there's my first <coughs> coordinate pair. Uh, and then just keep going. So let me maybe pick a different color for this one. So f of 1, f of negative 1. So now I'm picking a negative 1 to plug into my function. And so we get negative negative 1 cubed plus negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 minus 3. And we simplify that and you get... Uh, here is negative 1 times negative, which is positive 1. And then negative 1 squared is positive 1. And then that's a negative 3 and a minus another 3. And so you get 
uh, negative 4. So that's my second value. And then a third one. Well, the third one is kind of easier, but okay. I'll do it in any case. Let me pick a different color again. Uh, let's go blue. So f of 0. So f of 0 is uh, negative 0 cubed plus 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 3. And you can see that all of this just goes away. So we get negative 3. Okay, so this was an easier one. And then plug in <coughs> 1. And so we get f of 1. And so we get negative 1 squared plus 1, uh, sorry, negative 1 cubed uh, plus 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 3. And this would be negative 1. And this would be plus 1 plus 3 minus 3. And so negative 1 plus 1, nothing. 3 minus 3, nothing. So that's 0. Okay, and then last one, last one, f of 2, and that is negative 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 3. And if you simplify this, you get negative 8 plus 4 um, plus 6 minus 3. And that gives me negative 1. Okay, so here are my values that I have to put in the table there. Uh, f of 0 is negative 3. f of 1 is 0. Let me go back to purple. That's a 0. And then this is negative 1. And so we're just going to plot the points. We're just going to plot the points. So negative 2, 3 would be up here. Negative 2, 3 would be up here. Okay. And then, so check, we got this one. Uh, negative 1, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4 is right there. <coughs> check. 0, negative 3. 0, negative 3 is here. And then uh, 1, 0. 1, 0 would be here. And then 2, negative 1. 2, negative 1 would be here. Okay? So that seems like a confusing collection of points, but remember what we had in the beginning. Uh, I'll just see if I can select this and bring it down here. We had this in the beginning, okay? And so remember that little idea there. We said uh, the function should do something like this. So this is not too hard to see what's going on. Uh, the function, let me go to a different color again. Let me do red. The function should come down and then maybe turn around over here, come back up, maybe do that and go back down, okay? Then at least the end behavior is doing what we expected based on the degree and the leading coefficient. And so that's, that's what the function looks like. So now how do I know that that's what the function looks like? Uh, and also how do I know that this is right? This is a lot of work and you can make mistakes and things like that. So um, some things you can do. So we can take the function and just put it in our calculator. So I'm going to put it in a calculator and show you that you can check your work fairly easily. Negative x cubed plus x squared plus 3x minus 3. Okay, there's the function. And you can just do like a zoom, zoom standard to graph that. I think that should work. Oh, and now we can see that that looks at least similar to our sketch, at least somewhat similar, okay? Uh, but there's another thing you can do. You can say, after you've put the equation in, you can say second table, and then you'll see a table of values, and you can scroll through this. And we can use this to verify what we did is correct. Okay, so uh, negative two goes to three. So let's verify our table here. Uh, negative 2 goes to 3, that's right. Then negative uh, 1 goes to negative 4, yes. And then 0 goes to negative 3, yes. And 1 goes to 0, that looks good. And then 2 goes to negative 1, that looks good. So we, we know that we're on the right track, our points are correct, our shape is correct. It doesn't, not a perfect graph, but it's good enough. Okay? 
Uh, okay, so then let's talk about this one. Sorry, I shouldn't erase this. Let's talk about this graph. I'm going to do this quite a bit faster, all right? Um, since I'm going to assume that you're okay with doing this work, but you must be able to do that work, but I don't want to waste your time in this video doing all that, okay? So again, which values do I pick? What do I do with the function? Well, first look at the function, and you say the degree is even. So here's the degree, it's even. And the leading coefficient is positive. So the leading coefficient is positive, okay? And so from that, I can deduce that the graph should look something like this, okay? So we said if the degree is even, then the two uh, ends, the end behavior, the ends point in the same direction, and if the leading degree, the leading coefficient is positive, then they point up, okay? So again, we can see that here, even and positive, degree even, leading coefficient positive, the two ends point up in the same direction. All right, so something like that is what I'm expecting my graph to look like. And then if we pick some x values again, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, just always use those five. That would be the safest. You won't maybe get a perfect graph all the time, but that's about the best we can do without uh, making too many points. <clears throat> and so uh, do this again. f of negative 2, plug things in. And I'm just going to speed this up significantly and say if you do that, you get 12. So you can do the work there, all right, and verify that. Uh, and then f of negative 1, if you plug that into the function, you do all the work, uh, you get 2. All right, 2. And then f of 0, if you plug that in, do all the work, you get 4. 4. And then f of uh, 1, if you plug that in, you get 0. And then if you plug in 2, you get negative 4. Okay, negative 4. And again, let's try the, well, let's plot the graph and then we'll try the calculator approach to verify our work, okay? So uh, negative two goes to 12. This produces some issues for us uh, because the grid stops at 10. So what you do is just uh, adjust your scale, adjust your scale. So we're gonna go by two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So go by twos. Uh, vertically so we'll do uh, negative 2 negative 4 negative 6 negative 8 negative 10 negative 12 here <coughs> and then we'll go I apologize for having to clear my throat we'll go uh, 1 2 negative 1 uh, negative 2 because we only need to go by uh, ones for the x direction Okay, to, to draw all our points. And so we'll just draw that. So negative 2, 12 would be about here. Uh, let me pick a different color again. Negative 2, 12 would be up here. Okay, and then uh, that's check there. And then negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2 would be here. And then check 0, 4. 0, 4 would be up here. And then 1, 0. 1, 0 would be over here, and then 2, negative 4, 2, negative 4 would be down here. Now we're looking at this going, ooh, that doesn't make me happy. <clears throat> I know something like this should happen, so it seems like the function should do something like this, maybe. Uh, I'm not too happy. That's okay. Um, what you can do then, if you're seems like maybe I need more points. You can choose to go make, uh, find another value here, three, and plug that in and come up with a number and maybe get another point here somewhere. That's okay. Or you can just do it on your calculator and verify the shape on your calculator. So I'm gonna do that. Enter this in my calculator again and say uh, x to the fourth, right, minus x cubed. Uh, minus 4x squared plus 4, all right? And you do that, say graph, see what happens. Ah, there it is. 
And so we see the general shape. So that gives me a clue as to what to do here. Uh, I know that the function should come down and then turn around over here, come back down. But because it's even, I know it must come back up again. Okay, so it would be nice if we had a point over here somewhere, but we didn't find that, but that's okay. We know the shape. Also, remember, you can verify the points that we made by going back here and saying uh, second table. Okay, second table. And then I can say I plotted negative 2 is 12. That's right. Uh, negative 1 is 2. <clears throat> That's right. And so on. 2 is negative 4. And we did that right. So all of these are correct. Um, and so I can be confident that my graph is done correctly. Okay. Uh, lastly, lastly, before we conclude this video, and that's just... Uh, one other calculator skill, and that's graphing a polynomial in your calculator. Something more like a real-world polynomial that comes from problem-solving, uh, when people actually try to determine things like revenue or modeling the physical world. You get these things, and so two questions. Graph this function. You're going to have to adjust your window size. And then f find x when y is 20. Okay, this is... This is kind of seems like out of the blue, but you'll see when we do problem solving, this is a skill that you have to have to be able to do problem solving. Okay, and so let's go graph that on our calculator. Y equals clear this, and the function is 0.2 x cubed uh, minus 5x squared plus 38x and then minus 97 okay uh, and do that and now we can say graph just with our same zoom standard from negative 10 to 10 and so on you can see that's not looking real good i see something but now here's what you can do reason through this a little bit and say oh wait the degree <coughs> if i look at this carefully the degree is three so the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive. The leading coefficient is positive. So I know that the graph is doing something like this. Okay. If the degree is odd and leading coefficient is positive, I know it's doing something like this. So if I go back and look at my graph, I feel like I'm seeing this little peak right here. It's probably this little peak right here. Okay. So I know that I have to go much further to the right, much further to the left, and up and down. <clears throat> and so the way you fix this to see more of the graph, I would first do this and say window and say let's make the x bigger. And so let's make the x a bit bigger and see what that does for me. So if I make the x 20 and hit graph again, see what that does. Ah, I see a lot more now. Okay, so now I, knew, I know that I'm seeing... Uh, this branch this is getting cut off and then i'm seeing this little peak so something like that so i need to make my y min smaller so window make my y min smaller so i see lower values of y uh, and so i can do maybe i don't know let's try negative 100 see what that does oh and so actually now you kind of don't really need to do anything else because I'm seeing pretty much the whole graph. I know it needs to look something like this, and there it is. Now, later on, you'll know that we are seeing most of the important parts of the graph. You'll learn that later. But uh, maybe if you just want to make it look a little bit more balanced, you can do window and maybe do your uh, Y max and make that 100 and see if that makes things look a little bit better. <clears throat> okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. And so now at this point, um, we have to answer the question. So the question was, find x when y is 20, all right? So they're not giving me x and saying find y. They're giving me a y and saying find x. That's usually harder. So remember, if they give you an x, you can just do trace and type in the x value and hit enter. And then you find the y. But now they're giving me a y. I can't do that with trace. I can't put in a y value and get an x. You can go back to the table, but then the chance that you're going to get the number y equals 20 exactly in your table is not that good usually. 
So let's see what happens here. Y equals 20. No, I get to 23. So there are things you can do to try and make this better, but that's not necessary. So let's just go back to graph. And I'll show you how to do this. So you say Y equals... So if they're asking you for a x value given a y, then just graph this. Graph y equals 20. You just graph y equals 20. And now you'll have two graphs on the same window. And then all I tell the calculator is find this intersection point. Where the function intersects with 20, then I get an x value. And so we do that. We do second calc and we do intersect where the two graphs intersect. Enter, and then first curve is saying which is the curve that you want to consider first and to find the intersection between the two curves. So that, that doesn't really matter. I would suggest just going closer to the intersection. Okay, just go closer to the intersection. Here's the intersection. And then hit enter. Whatever curve you call the first one doesn't matter. And then second curve, that's the second curve. Okay, doesn't matter. And hit enter. And I don't want to guess, so you just hit enter again. And then there's the answer. So when y is 20, in other words, this is y equals 20. When y is 20, what is this value? Well, that value happens to be the function's value at that point, which is 14.866 for x. So you can just write uh, x equals 14.866 uh, when y equals 20. That's a very, very important calculator skill that you need to learn. How to find intersections and how to make graphs fit in the window. Okay, we'll use that all chapter. Thanks guys.